A sleeping giant is nestled in the western part of the United States. Though it stirs occasionally, it has not risen from slumber in nearly 70,000 years. But when it finally awakes, it may roar and heave with unprecedented force. Yellowstone National Park is a home to many breathtaking sights and marvelous natural wonders, but there are also numerous potential dangers. Throughout the past 150 years, tourists have been killed by a wide variety of factors, including, but not limited to, accidental shootings, stove explosions, lightning strikes, being hit by falling trees, falling down stairs, drowning, and even murder. According to the assessment of both natural and unnatural causes, the leading cause of death in Yellowstone is a tie between car accidents and heart attacks, with a prevalence of 12 per 100,000. Scary as it is to consider, Yellowstone's most potent weapon may be Mother Nature herself. The eruption of Yellowstone's supervolcano is one of the most dreaded events in recent history due to the high probability of a catastrophic disaster on a never-before-seen scale. It seems to be one of the most realistic threats to the majority of life on Earth, and it could even wipe out humanity if enough people aren't aware of the risks. Scientists who once believed Yellowstone was a dormant volcano are now rethinking their positions. Some have even abandoned the theory that an eruption won't happen for another 100,000 years. When a park ranger told the authorities that something was going on in the park, they had to close it off. What just transpired and what prompted this sudden closure? Stay with us till the end because the Yellowstone supervolcano may just be waking up from its slumber. So, without any further delay, let's jump right into the video. On July 20th, 1981, 24-year-old David Allen Kerwan and his friend Ronald Ratliff parked their truck early in the afternoon at Yellowstone's Fountain Paint Pot parking lot when Ratliff's dog, Moosey, a large mastiff for Great Dane, saw the two young men exploring the hot springs it bolted from the truck and jumped into the Celestine Pool, a spring that was measured to be 202 degrees Fahrenheit. When the dog started barking, Kirwan and Ratliff dropped what they were doing and ran to the well. A bystander saw Kirwan approaching the water and yelled, Don't go in there. Kirwan replied, Like hell I won't, and then took two steps into the pool before plunging headfirst into the water. After a futile attempt to swim to the dog and bring it to safety, he eventually gave up and tried to climb out of the water. When Ratliff rescued Kirwan from the spring, he was burned on the feet. Earl Welsh, another guest, shook Kirwan's hand and he could feel the skin flaking off his body. Blindness seemed to have struck him as his eye color was completely absent. The skin came off when another man rushed up to take Kirwan's shoes off. Welsh cautioned, don't do that, and a weary Kirwan responded, it doesn't matter. The third degree burns he suffered covered every part of his body, so no, it didn't help. He had passed away by the following day. The chronicle of 300 deaths at Yellowstone since its creation in 1872 has been called a little morbid but strangely fascinating by Booklist. Indeed, there wasn't much left for the Yellowstone archivist to write about the park after he or she had already penned five other books on the subject. He argues persuasively that it should be required reading for anyone planning to visit a national park. Areas where both nature and history have been kept unaltered Additionally, there is risk in unspoiled natural settings. Other accidents include bear attacks, toxic plants, toxic fumes, lightning, falling rocks, avalanches, diving, wild horses, murder, and gas stove explosions. But this is not the point of today's video. In northwestern Wyoming, in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, a bubbling caldera is the remnant of a massive volcanic eruption that occurred 640,000 years ago. Ultimately driven by magma and superheated fluids churning in the rock below the surface, the 3,472-square-mile park encompassing the caldera is filled with geologic wonderlands of sprouting geysers and effervescing pools. Norris Geyser Basin, located to the northwest of the caldera, is one such region, and it is home to more than 500 hydrothermal features. These turbulent geysers and pools are constantly evolving, sometimes even over the course of a single day. For over 20 years, the basin and the area surrounding it 
have been fluctuating in size by several inches at random intervals. This area is larger than Chicago. It is challenging to pinpoint the precise causes of any movement in a volcanically active region like Yellowstone. In any case, a study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Solid Earth may shed light on the topic of this landmass's inhaling and exhaling. Researchers modeled potential changes below the surface of Norris Geyser Basin using decades of satellite-based radar and GPS data. A magma body intruded beneath Norris in the late 1990s, releasing fluids that then flowed upward through the rocky maze. The ground would rise as fluids became trapped and pressure increased, and then fall again as the fluids found a way to escape. Fluids derived from magma may now be located only a mile or so below the surface. Large explosions are uncommon, but a new blast is always possible in Norris Geyser Basin. The likelihood of hydrothermal explosions is increased if fluids have pooled close to the basin's surface. The interconnected systems of the rock's plumbing, however, are incredibly intricate. So, is Yellowstone overdue for an eruption? When will Yellowstone's supervolcano erupt? To get these answers, we have to understand the concept of supervolcanoes. Hidden five miles below Yellowstone National Park is a reservoir of hot magma, fed by a massive plume of molten rock rising from hundreds of miles below. Many of the park's well-known geysers and hot springs can be directly attributed to this heat. The surface above the chamber rises and falls at regular intervals because magma rises into it and cools. This magma chamber has only erupted a few times in recorded history. Most Yellowstone eruptions have produced only modest lava flows, the most recent of which occurred on Pitchstone Plateau some 70,000 years ago. Super eruptions, though extremely unlikely, are what really draw people to Yellowstone. An eruption of magnitude 8 or higher on the Volcano Explosivity Index is considered a super eruption because it ejects at least 1,000 cubic kilometers or about 240 cubic miles of material, enough to squish Texas under five feet of dirt. In comparison to even the largest eruptions we're used to, the power of these super eruptions is on a different scale entirely. This USGS graph contrasts the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption with the super eruptions in Yellowstone. Yellowstone has experienced three major eruptions throughout its history the first two occurring 2.1 and 1.3 million years ago, and the third occurring 664,000 years ago. The most recent of these eruptions occurred at Yellowstone Lava Creek, and it ejected so much material that it created a depression in the ground 34 miles by 50 miles in size, which is now known as the Yellowstone Caldera. The most recent was around 26,000 years ago in Lake Tarupo, New Zealand. Even more dramatically, tectonic plate movement 74,000 years ago triggered the massive Toba eruption. The result was a dramatic global winter that lasted for 6 to 10 years and, according to some, may have nearly wiped out the first humans. There has been about one major volcanic eruption on Earth every 100,000 years on average, though this is by no means a rule in stone. If the supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park ever erupted again, the ash cloud would spread thousands of miles across the United States, potentially destroying homes, smothering crops, and knocking out electricity. It would have catastrophic consequences. And yet, that's no reason to panic. Thankfully, the likelihood of that happening is low. There have only been three truly enormous eruptions from the Yellowstone supervolcano, which is thousands of times more powerful than a regular volcano. A 2.1 Ma event, a 1.3 Ma event, and a 664,000 Ma event all occurred. However, the Yellowstone supervolcano continues to pique people's interest for apocalyptic reasons. To better understand what a Yellowstone super eruption might entail, a group of scientists published a paper in Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems in September of 2014. They discovered, among other things, that the volcano could produce enough dangerous volcanic ash to blanket the Midwest and bury states like Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Colorado under three feet of shattered rock and glass. Those levels of ash would be devastating to plant and animal life, would crush roofs, and would cause all sorts of electrical devices to short out. Nonetheless, the recent underground activity level continues to fuel speculation about the potential severity of an eruption. The rate of the volcano's ascent 
has been unprecedented over the past decade. Between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes occur each year in Yellowstone. Most have a magnitude of three or less, making them barely perceptible. However, scientists can now gauge the rate at which the magma chamber beneath the park is being filled thanks to these tremors. An increase in park-wide tremors could be an indication that more magma has been pumped into the reservoir. Scientists have concluded that the rumblings in the magma chamber do not pose a threat at this time, despite the increase in temblers. However, geologists have a hard time predicting Yellowstone's next move because they haven't been around long enough to analyze everything that happens in Yellowstone. The volcano's ancient history can provide some insight. Geological data suggests that in the past 2.1 million years, Yellowstone has experienced three major eruptions. Volcanologists estimate that the time between eruptions was 600,000 to 800,000. The park and thousands of kilometers of surrounding landscape are littered with artifacts from the last major event, which occurred roughly 640,000 years ago. Volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other debris from previous eruptions blanketed the majority of the United States back when they occurred. Objects have been discovered as far away as Louisiana. Every time this happened, the Yellowstone supervolcano swallowed everything in its path, including trees, mountains, and people. Calderas are the depressions caused by this process. The Yellowstone supervolcano is also known by its caldera name. Yellowstone faces a substantial natural risk from an eruption that forms a caldera. Hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon were scorched, and 56 people and thousands of animals were killed. But scientists say the last Yellowstone eruption was a thousand times greater. The Yellowstone supervolcano's last eruption, which occurred over a thousand years ago, sent a deadly cloud of ash, lava, and poisonous gases soaring for miles. It's likely that one-third of the continent was completely in the dark. The area was swept by pyroclastic flows, which are rivers of molten rock and gases that travel at high speeds and bury or shatter anything in their path. Once picturesque landscapes were charred for kilometers by magma that erupted from the ground. The Yellowstone Caldera, which is 50 kilometers or 30 miles wide, and 70 kilometers or 45 miles long, is a physical remnant of the last eruption. The Lava Creek Tuff is a region that still displays the thick volcanic debris that remained after the eruption. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about Yellowstone supervolcano eruption? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on the video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one. See you guys in the next one.